The Thomas family went on holiday to Vancouver Island and stayed in the idyllic Telegraph Cove, situated in the north of the island. In the summer months, the northern resident hawkers come to feed round here. We were here eight years ago and they were easy to find and we had some amazing encounters with them. Unfortunately, this year was different and sadly, we did not see them. Although we did have an amazing time seeing lots of other wildlife, including grizzly and black bears. We made some great friends at the Whale Interpretive Centre. They made us feel very welcome and I particularly had a great time nerding out with them about orcas. The centre is full of the bones of various different whales and has lots of cool information about whales, particularly the northern resident orcas. The interpreters are all lovely very approachable and are so truly enthusiastic about all cetaceans and very knowledgeable about orcas. One of the interpreters at the centre, Tyra Bain, agreed to be interviewed about the northern residents and gave us an introduction to their social structure and a possible reason as to why the orcas may not have appeared this summer. The background noise you can hear is rain. It was quite atmospheric in the centre in the early morning with the rain hammering down on the roof. So I'm at the Well Interpretation Centre um, in the North Island of Vancouver and we've spent a lot of time here. It's an absolutely fantastic place and been made to feel really welcome. And one of the um, guides, do we say guides? Oh yeah, guides, guides interpreters. interpreters <laughs> that um, work here is um, Tyra and she is going to answer some of my questions. So first of all, Tyra, would you like to explain a little bit about the northern residents and sort of the families that they're made up of? Absolutely. So this, so in BC, we have four different populations of orcas, um, one of which is our northern residents, which are fish eating um, orcas that are preying primarily on Chinook salmon, but also other salmon as well, just 90% of their diets Chinook, which is the largest, fattiest, most nutritious salmon um, in this area. So within this community, we have three different clans which represent three different dialect groups. So each clan speaks slightly different from each other. And they're using these dialects to figure out who they should be mating with. And so you're going to prefer to mate with someone who sounds differently than you um, because this indicates that you're likely not closely related, which is quite which handy. Is <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> um, to go a little bit further in, we have what we call a pod. In the past, these are... These are families that would travel together about 50% of the time, um, but really it's just extended families, everyone who would show up for Christmas dinner. Uh, and then within these pods, we have the matrilines, lines, which are really the core groups um, to these communities. And this is essentially a tight-knit family um, led by the oldest female, in this case, A42. Uh, she travels with all of her children and then her grandchild as well. And they're going to be staying together their entire life, um, always with their mothers. And I, I just find that so cute, basically, that your family stays together mm -hmm. all that time. Um, so they're doing really well, aren't they, these orcas at the moment? They're not like the southern residents, they're actually increasing in number? Yes, so northern <coughs> residents still face the same challenges as southern residents. Um, there, there is a worry about food availability as Chinook salmon is an endangered population of salmon on our coast as well as pollution is definitely a really big issue and just overall disturbance as well. But unlike our southern residents which are declining quite a bit um, and are only at about 75 individuals, the northern residents have been increasing and in previous years it was about 3-4% to 4 of their population has increased which is really nice to see. Um, so we're right now looking at about 340 um, orcas in this population. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've been out on two whale watching trips, which have been amazing because we have seen some whales, but we haven't seen the orcas. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that for decades they've been in this area. So what's happened to them? It's really hard to say exactly what's happening. This is kind of unprecedented. We haven't seen this happen before. Usually we start seeing the northern resident orcas come into this area around the middle of July, sometimes even earlier. Mm -hmm but it's August 7th or 8th? 8th? Oh, <laughs> it's, August, <laughs> it's August 8th and we still haven't seen them. 
Um, the likely reason to this is they're just finding food in other places. Um, their patterns are very much dictated by the Chinook salmon and so they're likely just a bit further up north around the Prince Rupert area feeding on lots of salmon there which is good um, but as such they haven't come into this area which is too bad. Um, another theory is that we have these two families up here, um, A50s and the A54s, named after the oldest female in those families. Um, so for the A50s, you have A50, the oldest female, traveling with all her children, a grandchild, and then A54, her sister, traveling with all of her children, plus quite a few grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And this year, in the spring, we've discovered that A54 has had her sixth calf, as well as her daughter A86 has had her second. Oh, that's amazing. Yes, <laughs> really good news. And so likely, maybe they just don't want to make the journey down here. They have so much food up north that it's not worth it to bring their calves into a new area where maybe there isn't enough food or they just don't know yet. Um, there does seem to be lots of Chinook salmon in these waters right now, and so it's likely not that there's that they aren't coming into this area because there's no food. There's just probably more food elsewhere. And and the, I've heard this really interesting thing about um, this pod being like a, a host mm. pod. Would you explain that to me, please? Yeah, absolutely. So this family, the A30 Batraline. Um, a30 was the mother of A50 and A54, and when she passed away, her daughters actually stayed together for quite a few years with their own children and their grandchildren. Um, but in recent years, we've kind of seen a split of these families in which we do often see them together, but more often they're by themselves. Uh, and so what we generally see at the start of the season is that one of our first families in the area tend to be one of those two, if not both of them together. And so maybe the reason why we aren't seeing any other families in the area is because the A50s and A54s aren't really here to welcome them. Um, they seem to, when new families come into the area, they almost seem to head north to greet them in a way. Um, at least we'll see them bringing other families into the area. Um, maybe as a welcome, we can't say for sure. <laughs> but be with the A54s, they've been sighted up by Prince Rupert, so quite a bit further north. And for the A50s here, we actually haven't really recorded them at all this year, so no one really knows where they are. Uh, maybe they're on their way, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> They'll arrive just as we go tomorrow, I can tell, but I, as long as they're okay, I think that's the main thing, isn't it? Well, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for talking to oh, us thank you very and much. for making us so welcome when we've been here oh, doing you. other things as well. Thank <laughs> you. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you. <laughs> it simply blows my mind that there are two host matrilines lines of orcas which greet the other pods as they enter their summer feeding area. The social behaviour of these awesome creatures is amazingly complex and utterly astounding. The situation is obviously very dynamic and as I was writing the ending to this video, things had changed somewhat. On August the 19th, the A54s and the A50s were seen in Whale Channel, which is off the mainland and way north of Telegraph Cove. It must be such a relief to those people who had been worried about them. Thank goodness all seems to be well with them. Whilst the A54s and A50s have yet to return to the Telegraph Cove area, other pods have been heard and seen doing their normal thing of going to their rubbing spot at Strider Beach and moving around the area, but they have arrived very late in the season. It has been observed that for more than a decade, the arrival of the northern residents has become later and they are leaving earlier. This would seem to be the latest to date. So what could be the reason why this is occurring? Well, Helena Simmons of Orcalab, who put forward the hypothesis about the host families not being there to greet the other pods, also suggested that the area is just getting too busy and noisy for them, or simply that their food, Chinook salmon, are in good supply elsewhere. No one really knows. Perhaps it will be something that continues to happen in the coming years, or next year there will be a return to a more normal pattern. Only time will tell. At least the northern residents seem to be safe and healthy, with a growing population. Nothing awful has happened to the A50s, it's just that no one saw them, and long may they all continue to thrive. My thanks go to the team at the Whale Interpretive Centre, who made us so welcome during the days we spent at Telegraph Cove, and particularly Tyra for her brilliant interview. 
My love and thoughts are with you all as you come to terms with the loss of Toki. And also thank you to Ben who did the filming. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends. And don't forget to put the notifications on.